All right, David Harry here, and iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 are finally upon us. And whilst both of them do have some amazing new functions, for me personally, and I believe this may apply for anybody who uses their iOS or iPad device for doing video, the big standout for me now is that both are now compatible with ProRes Media. So in this video, I'm just gonna dive straight into this. I've got an iPad Pro M1 2021. I've also got LumaFusion on it, and I've got an external Samsung T7 one terabyte drive. So let me dive into this, and it'll kind of be self-explanatory as I go along. Okay, so to start this off then, first thing is, I'm actually gonna be editing directly from an external SSD here, so nothing is gonna be local on the actual iPad. So this is a Samsung T7. These are fantastic. I'm gonna do a video soon just about these T7s being used with the likes of anything that's iOS or iPad OS or Mac OS that uses USB-C or Thunderbolt. These are actually USB-C, not Thunderbolt, but they're quite fast, so really cool. In fact, there'll be a link to this in the description below along with some other stuff okay so what i'm going to do here is show us the settings for the video as we can see here it is 60 frames per second it is in rec 709 10 bit also if i go to preferences here we can see as far as preview quality is concerned i'm in best quality as well so that's 4k 60 best quality and of course the timeline will be dictated to by the first bit of media that i throw in here which is going to be 4k now what i'm going to do is oh actually before I go any further you might see there that says Ninja V or Ninja 5 I'm gonna do another video straight after this one where the Ninja 5 SSDs plug straight into this iPad Pro and you can edit live straight off a Ninja 5 SSD it is immense uh, but anyway let's see link folder here so I'm gonna go to my T7 drive there it is I'll link that so there's the T7s now come up so let me just get to there so 4k 8k files 4k 60 ProRes. Now in here I've got like a number of variations ranging from the lowest which is uh, proxy mode through to LT, through to 422, through to HQ and then through to 4444. So what I'm going to do is add each of these to the timeline starting with like the lowest quality one as it were. And I would say lowest quality, it's really just bit, mostly bit rate with these ProRes files. There are little differences as well as far as the encoding is concerned but essentially this is the weakest bitrate up to the strongest bitrate. So I'll start off here with, let's see, where are we? Proxy. So there's the proxy file. There's the LT file. There's the 422 file. There's 422HQ. And finally, 4444. Now what I'm going to do here, because if you just play a file for a few seconds, you might think that that's working properly. But what I'm going to do is let each of these play through. Each one's a minute long. Now, I suggest you watch this because it's going to prove to you whether it will or it won't do this. Like I said, I could go through and play like, you know, five, six, seven seconds or something. But that doesn't always tell the whole story because what happens is if the video buffer gets stressed out, those files won't play back properly. So I have to play them through like completely. Now, I will have chapter markers in the video anyway. So if you want to and you want to skip past and you just want to see bits of it that's fine but for anyone who's dead like dead seriously into this stuff just watch it and you'll be blown away right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go full screen here i will leave the blue oh wait there i'll leave the blue cut bar on the bottom here just so we can see the progress and so i can let you know which ones are coming up as well okay so let me start this so don't forget first one here is going to be proxy
Okay, this is proxy finishing going into LT. Okay, that was LT, it's about to go into 422. Okay, that was 422 going into 422 HQ. Okay, four two two going to four 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 four. Go. Okay, so immediately it's uh, it kind of like messed up on four 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 four. Now let's just see if there's any ways we can get around this. Sorry, I was just trying to do an action on the on the screen there, which is off a different NLE. <laughs> right. So what I'll do here, let me go to the let's see playback and then let's just drop this down to fastest let's see if that helps us with the 4444 okay so that's paused it there or it's run out of processing or video buffer so what i'm going to do here let me just try dropping it down to rec 709 this is going to be just 8-bit playback now, so let me just, in fact, I'll go sort of a bit into the media so it doesn't it doesn't have time to have used any of the pre-buffered cache. Oh yeah, anything to do with like this buffering system and stuff, if anyone's interested in that, I'm going to do a video explaining how like, you know, the video buffer works inside of uh, LumaFusion and stuff. Actually is applicable for most NLEs, but specifically for LumaFusion. I'll do that video soon, so here we go.
Okay, so what happened there? I know I didn't play the entire one minute, but dropping it down to uh, Rec 709, just 8 bit, and also like going fastest on the picture quality, it did for the best part play that whole chunk. However, just towards the end, it started dropping frames. Now, what I'm going to do here is just very quickly uh, copy that file internally. Let's see if that makes any difference. Okay, so back to LumiFusion then. What it is, I had to blur that out just then, and that's because there was bits of sensitive naming going on there that I can't let people see. Uh, the thing as well also, that is just shown something which I'll make a video about, and that is that, uh, unfortunately, uh, iPad OS and presumably iOS OS have gotten no better with file management. What happened there, it was stolen for ages after I selected the file from the T7. Now this usually happens when you're trying to bring external files to the internal uh, file you know, space. Uh, what happens is, for some weird reason, it looks like as if the iPad almost pre-buffers anything that it's about to copy. So it took ages because it's a large file. So even before I could hit copy, it paused for ages. I'll do a separate video about that because that's still an issue. Okay, so let me just come up here and let me just go to files here. So hold on a minute. I don't even know where I am. So imported. Let's see. Files. Oh, where's he going? There it is. So let me just add that down. Okay, so straight away, I'm just going to leave it in 8-bit 709 and fastest. Let's see how we get on. Okay, as we could see there, just towards the end, it just started dropping frames again. This is the reason why you have to play through, like, you know, for some time on certain stuff, because it's not always apparent where things are going to start falling apart. Now, the thing is there, I've moved the media internally. So what we're doing here is that we are bypassing, like, you know, whether or not the problem is going to be down to drive speed hitting the external SSD. What it is, we are now at the limits of what the iPad is capable of. And don't forget, this is a 2021 M1, sorry, yeah, 2021 M1. So basically the most powerful iPad Pro processing at the moment and it can't handle that however that was 4k 64444 i don't think anybody expected it to even see it let alone play it but as we could see everything else in the timeline played through swimmingly well let me just pop back now to an end summary okay so there we have it then ProRes video footage playing and editing with inside an iPad Pro M1 2021. Now, of course, I was using LumaFusion version 3 to do this, and also the media, very importantly, was being accessed externally from a Samsung T7 drive there, and that is basically a function of LumaFusion. Now, also, this was 4K60, and it was ProRes 422HQ. So this system was being pushed like crazy in order to do what it was doing. Now what I'm gonna do from here on in is a whole bunch of stuff similar to this because I've just ordered the iPhone 13 mini and I've also ordered the iPad mini as well. So both of those devices should be with me within the next few days. Now obviously both of them are gonna have either iOS 15 on as in the phone and iPad OS 15 as in the iPad mini. So what I'm going to be doing is reproducing some of this stuff. I'll be doing a whole bunch of kind of like, you know, comparisons between them. Maybe even put up the iPad mini or the phone against the actual M1 Pro as well and do things like, say, speed tests for encoding and stuff like that. 
all kinds of nutty stuff basically also as well if you're interested there will be a link in the description below taking you to the luma touch site where you can find out more about luma fusion i have to say right now i've not really used many other nles on ios or on ipad os but for me, LumaFusion, for what it is, is an absolutely outstanding app. And I would also suggest right now, this is going to be a very clear case showcase app as well, because of now what iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 can do. Anyways, there will be links in the description for the stuff used in the video, also other Apple related product links and stuff. Now, if you're into this type of thing, maybe you might wanna subscribe to my channel and click on the bell notification icon so you can be informed of future videos like this one and especially stuff to do with the iphone and the ipad mini and stuff like that anyways i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now